Good morning. I um, slept with that hair mask in, and then, you know, usually I just wash it the next morning, but I have to go to Pilates this morning, so I think I'm just gonna leave it in a little bit longer and then just take a shower after Pilates and wash it out. Isn't it a good styling? <laughs> Such a good, it's like a styling cream. I just put a little towel down on uh, my pillow so I didn't, you know, stain anything because my hair does feel a little, like a little masky. It feels a little oily. Anyway, uh, oh, let me grab the coffee packet. All right, today's coffee is from Pavement Coffee House. It's called Winter Solstice. It tastes like toffee, clementine cake, spiced tea and pine. It is light and balanced. It is on the lighter side. Delicate and refreshing, this brew is like soft morning light on fresh snowfall after the longest night of the year. It is definitely, it is kind of refreshing. It's very interesting. It is very light. I don't feel like any of these notes are overwhelming. Like usually, I feel like one of their tastes like one of their descriptors. It's like very clearly that usually like the chocolate or something. But this, yeah, light and balanced. I'd say it's very, very balanced. Yeah, it's very interesting. Oh, and I think this is the first coffee house that's from Boston that we've seen. Yeah, I think they've generally been from either Washington or Oregon, right? It's very interesting. It's smooth. It's smoother than I thought when after reading all of the notes that it would have. Anyway, wow, I, it is early. Uh, I fell asleep early last night, <laughs> I think because I had that relaxing bath. I did that face mask. My skin feels really smooth. I just had that nice day. And then I think I slept really heavily. There's something about new sheets, man. I <laughs> just love it so much. I slept really heavily and I just, I woke up at like 4.15 this morning just ready to go. So it's about 4.38 right now. And I've got Pilates, like I mentioned. But I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna enjoy my coffee. Um, let's open up these advent calendars and I'll be back once I come back from Pilates. Okay, day seven. What do we have here? Well, it's on the top. <laughs> I guess it's down here. It's in one of the gingerbread boxes. We have, ooh, the English Parent Freesia. This is my favorite Jo Malone cologne for the winter time. So perfect. Right, what do we have for YSL today? Uh, number seven, Pure Shots Night Reboot Serum. Oh, wow, look at that. That's so pretty, this <laughs> pretty peach color. It's so nice. All right, Sisley, number seven. Oops. We've got the Concentrated Firming Body Cream. This is really an amazing body cream. It's supposed to help firm the body, but what I've noticed is it actually helps with my like chicken skin because I can't use acids on my skin. I get I just get rashes and stuff. So I was surprised at how well how well it helps like that whole what do they call it? Is it KP KPL something like that? Anyway, it's like chicken skin on the back of my. Um, upper arms. Anyway, this is a great body cream. I swear I'm gonna like end up tearing that thing off. I can't believe how strongly it's <laughs> it's attached to the box. All right, we are doing number seven. Where is number seven? <laughs> oh, it's over here. Number seven. The Hydro Clarity line, and we have the Restorative Concentrate Cream. Ooh, okay. Where is number seven? Oh, all the way up here. And we have co cotton or cotton. <laughs> Super clean. I wouldn't call this fresh. It's very perfumey. It's almost powdery, like a powdery clean scent. So interesting. I know this is one of their holiday scents as well. Awesome. All right, that is it for today's advent calendars. So guys, I came up with a really wacky, <laughs> it's not wacky, a little goofy, kind of a silly video idea in the shower today. Um, I wanted to try on a bunch of new makeup, but I was like, I don't know, I kind of want to just chat about other stuff. I don't want to just sit here and just, 
drone on and on about makeup. It's mishmas. Let's do something different. So we're going to be trying a bunch of different makeup. I don't even know what because I've just collected like so much new makeup that I want to try. I have another bag. Where's the other bag? I have like another bag of full of makeup that I want to try. There's all that Addiction Tokyo stuff that I want to try. But I thought, and I think my inspiration is the Saks Fifth Avenue in New York, the flagship store, their like Christmas windows, which are always such a spectacle, right? Every year they have like velvet ropes outside so you can walk around the building um, and take a look at the uh, decorations and everything and the window installations. This year they partnered with Dior and the creative director of Dior, she is really into astrology. And so they have this huge like wheel on the outside of Saks. And I, I mean, I just, I'm always just tickled by astrology. I think it's so much fun. Of course, I take it all with a grain of salt, but you've heard me talk about, you've heard me talk about uh, me being a Virgo or saying something very Virgo-esque or something on this channel. So anyway, I thought what we would talk about today are the zodiac signs as beauty brands if i were to associate a beauty brand with a zodiac sign because the zodiac signs all have pretty distinct um, and unique personality traits and i just thought it'd be fun to kind of say like oh well i feel like an aries is such and such brand so anyway i just wanted to show you this book I don't even think it's still in print, but this is called The Secret Language of Birthdays. And it has um, personality profiles for each day of the year. It's a huge, huge, like, like Zodiac reference book. It's so amazing. <laughs> it's so, so amazing. I just wanna share with you what it says for September 21st, which is my birthday. It shares with you like who was born on this day. So my favorite, I actually have two favorites that were born on September 21st, Bill Murray and Stephen King. I'm like, yeah, that, that sounds about right. And actually, let me take this cover off. This is gonna bug me. It says that the strengths of people born on my day are progressive, <laughs> tasteful and aesthetic, weaknesses, materialistic, sensationalist, and flighty. I mean, I think that's pretty, that's pretty close. <laughs> that's pretty close to uh, describing me in a nutshell. But yeah, it's just, it's just really, really cool. And I like that there's a meditation, it's something that people born on this day should give thought to and mine says beauty is not always something you must search for i was like oh okay so anyway i used to just you know anytime i met someone i would ask them what their birthday was and then i would look it up in this uh book again i take it all with a grain of salt i know this is not you know carved in stone uh, it's just a lot of fun so anyway i have I don't want to say i've studied astrology I've, I've just been interested in it for a very very long time and I remember my girlfriends and I would sit around. I mean, this was like right out of college. We were young. And if we met a guy, I'd be like, well, what's his sign? Like that was the first thing we would ask. Well, what's his sign? And of course we all had different books and we would run and look them up or whatever. And of course, like it, it grew from there. We would have our birth charts uh, made for us and like, oh my God, well, what's your rising? What's your moon in? And you know, all this stuff. So anyway, your sign is like your sun sign. So I'm a Virgo and my rising sign is Gemini and my moon is in Leo. So I'm kind of all over the place. But anyway, I just thought it would be fun to kind of uh, just be a little silly today and talk about uh, Zodiac signs as beauty brands. So we're going to start from the top of the Zodiac uh, chart, which is Aries. So Aries is the first sign. And those are people born, what is it, late March through most of April. And uh, Aries is a fire sign. And, sorry, there's something in my eye. Probably dust from this book because it's so old and I haven't looked at it in years. But Aries is a fire sign. And let's see if I can just find a simple description of Aries in here. So yes, yeah, so they're fire signs. Their ruler is Mars. The symbol is the ram. Um, their mode is intuition 
Uh, their motto is I am. So uh, let's see, I'm not gonna go through all of this. Aries body area. So there's like a, a like a biological body area that's associated to each sign. Mine, of course, is like the intestines. It's like the digestive system. Aries, it's the head, face, upper jaw, cerebrum, cerebrospinal system. So they represent the ego. They are the first, uh, like I said, they're the first sign of the zodiac and the signs um, kind of depending on their order is sort of uh, like life stages. So Aries would be like birth basically. And so they're, they're the ego. They're ruled by the energetic and forceful Mars, which we know is the God of war. <laughs> the Ram is fiery, prodigious, and dynamic. Aries does not take kindly to being misunderstood or mistaken for something which it is not. Uh, Aries can be seen as an evolutionary stage between Pisces, which is the last sign in the zodiac, and Taurus that transmutes diffuse, watery, and otherworldly energies into fixed, earthly, and practical ones. So Pisces is a water sign and Taurus is an earth sign. So they're saying that maybe it bridges those two gaps. So because Aries are so fiery and dynamic and really just go-getters, I thought that maybe the beauty brand that I would associate with Aries is Pat McGrath. What do you guys think? Because Pat McGrath's makeup, it's so, I think it's so daring. I think it's so bright. I feel like there's a lot of energy in Pat McGrath's makeup and Aries are supposed to be very, very energetic. So that is my uh, first association between Zodiac and beauty brand. And I thought I would take this opportunity and actually open up a box that I ordered from Pat McGrath months ago and I just haven't gotten a chance to open it up. I think it was her new holiday collection or fall collection, but it came out, you know, a while ago. This is the Bijou collection. Client order, order type. Oh, here we go, printed October 4th. So it's been more than two months since I placed this order and I'm just opening it now. This is how disorganized I've gotten and busy and just kind of all over the place. And I took those couple of trips in October that weren't planned and I think that's what really threw me off. So let's see what we have here. We're definitely gonna be using some of this in today's video, not all of it, because I don't think I realized I ordered, I think I just ordered the whole, you know how you can get a discount on Pat McGrath when you order like the whole collection or like a set? I think that's what I did. Five pan eyeshadow palettes. The Divine Glow Highlighter. You guys, I don't, none of this is even ringing a bell. And then I got two, I think they're like big face palettes. Let's take a look at these. I should also start putting makeup on, right? I actually took out, for the first time in a long time, my Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer, just to kind of, you guys know, sometimes if I don't wanna put on a full face of foundation, I just use that concealer. That's what I feel like today. So Bijou Brilliant Starstruck Splendor Blush and Eyeshadow Palette. Wow, so many eyeshadows in this collection. And can I just say, I used to, you know, be a, be a big fan of most of Pat McGrath's packaging. And then she's gone down this Bridgerton sort of road where now everything looks kind of like I don't know, like a weird royalty thing. And ooh, this is pretty. Here is Starstruck Splendor. And then someone said, oh, this just looks like Too Faced. And now, now I can't unsee it. <laughs> now all I see is Too Faced makeup whenever I open up the style of Pat McGrath packaging, which is not my favorite. So kind of ruined for me. Let's take a look at this other face palette. This is the Jeweled Temptation. Ah. This one looks a little deeper and darker. There was one five pan eyeshadow palette that I was particularly interested in and I'm gonna have to dig it out. So this one is Lunar Nightshade. Oh wow, that's pretty. And then Sunset Romance is this one. This looks like a very typical Pat McGrath color story there. And then we have Bronze Ecstasy. I think this is the one. Yeah, I think this is the one that I was really interested in. And then Bordeaux Bliss. Let's see what this looks like. Well, this is pretty too. It's very, it's not very Bordeaux. It's more mauve, mauve toned. All right, so we've got those five eyeshadow palettes. 
Got those eyeshadows and blushes. And then we have this highlighter. Okay. This looks really reminiscent to highlighter she's come out with. This one is Golden Moonlight. Is this a repromote? Did I buy something? <laughs> Did I buy something I already have? Possibly. This is so strange too. Usually there's like a plastic sheet or whatever over this and there isn't. And now there's highlight like all over the mirror. Anyway. All right. So we've got a highlight. Well, let's um, kind of start from the top here. I'm going to put on some of that Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer to just give me a little bit of a base. I have it in the shade 2N. Is this the one that's a little bit too deep for me? I think so. It could be okay. Um, because I know in the older formula I was 2N, but in the newer formula I felt like 1N was a better match for me. I think that's okay. Yeah, that still works. I think that's good. And then um, let's move on to the second sign. So that would be Taurus. My husband, by the way, is a Taurus. And they are earth signs. Their um, animal obviously is the bull. And they are uh, ruled by Venus. Uh, symbol is the bull. Mode is sensation. Motto is I have. And let's see. Taurus attractions to Libra, Scorpio, and Capricorn. And in fact, my husband does have a lot of Scorpio friends. I feel like in the month of November, he's like constantly texting friends like, happy birthday, happy, we have to get together, happy birthday, you know, that sort of situation. So, uh, okay, quickly, ruled by Venus, Taurus seeks harmony and is concerned with making its surroundings beautiful. Taurus is deeply involved with the material world. Therefore, having possessions and establishing security are vital to its existence. Because Taurus is both fixed and an earth sign, it is usually pictured as stubborn and confrontational, like its symbol, the bull. But in the interest of harmony can be surprisingly flexible. Um, so just from my experience with my husband, he can be incredibly stubborn to a fault, but he does come around. I just feel like his stubbornness is sort of like a knee jerk reaction. And then once he kind of thinks about it, he's like, okay, you know, whatever. He really, really likes his things. He likes his things. He likes them showing. He likes them out, which is why his office has all of those bookshelves. He wants all of his books shown. I was like, don't you want like doors to cut? He, no, he wants them all out. I'm like, okay, you got to keep them neat then. <laughs> yeah. And he just, he's really into his creature comforts. Like when he finds a pair of shoes that he loves, he wears them every day. Um, he has like his favorite hoodie. It's always like hanging, you know, right next to him. Yeah, he's really into his his creature comforts. So that's what I always kind of associate with Torians is that, yeah, they just, they like nice things and they like it all being shown. So anyway, what I thought, now I don't know, you may you may agree or disagree with me, but I, I put down for Taurus Clay de Poe. And I think I... I thought of Clay de Poe because all of their packaging is so beautiful. It's definitely something, you know, like if you're really into uh, beautiful things, material things, you're going to really be into packaging. And I think the Clay de Poe packaging for most of their products are just really gorgeous and really, really beautiful. I also thought of them because they're phenomenal across makeup and skincare. And I, I, you know, I just felt like because Torians really love their creature comforts, they're going to want nice skincare. You know, they're going to have their routine. My husband has like a whole bathroom routine. They're going to really like their routine and really like be into it. So I don't know. I just thought maybe, maybe Clay de Poe and Torians would be uh, sort of akin. And actually, because I do think this Dior concealer, I think it works well because it's, a pretty good match for my skin tone. I don't think it's very brightening. So I want to use my Clay de Poe concealer underneath my eyes to brighten up a little bit. All right. So I have the shade one, uh, ivory. So this is the lightest shade that this concealer comes in. This is their concealer N. this is their concealer stick. This is probably one of the most popular makeup products in the Clay de Poe line. And for good reason, this is high coverage, but so light on the skin, despite it being, um, a cream, product. And I really like this ivory shade if I want to do a little bit of brightening. So that's what I have from Clay de Poe. So anyway, if you guys want to sound off down below in the comments section, what brands you think go with 
zodiac signs. I would love, love, love to hear from you. Oh, the other thing that kind of made me think clay de po with Taurus or whatever, now that I'm using this concealer, Taurians are known to be very dependable. Um, and I find clay de po products to be incredibly dependable. They, I don't know, they just never steer me wrong. They always, if anything, exceed expectations. They're just really great go-to products. Um, so that is Torian's Gemini. Now this was tough, and I think I switched this around with another brand. But anyway, let's, let's read up a little bit on Gemini's. So I'm a Gemini rising, and I know Gemini's are uh, air signs. And of course there's qualities for like fire, earth, air, and water signs, but they're so vague and they're so general that we're not gonna bother talking about that. Okay, so uh, yeah, they're air, they're mutable. The ruler is Mercury, which is the planet closest to the sun. Uh, symbols of the twins. Mode is thought and motto is I communicate. So Gemini colors, yellow and light green, and Gemini attractions to Virgo, Libra, and Sagittarius. So ruled by Mercury, Gemini is concerned with the close connection between thought and verbal expression. It is also associated with details rather than the broad view or larger picture. Uh, liveliness, variety, and change, both of experience and environment, are all vital to this airy sign. Gemini, the twins, is the first double sign and as such clearly indicates the need for a partner. It also holds the capacity for adaptation and even sudden reversals of direction. Gemini can be seen as evolutionary stage between Taurus and Cancer that transmutes fixed, earthy, and practical energies into protective, empathic, and sensitive ones. So I, I went with, and again, please let me know what you think the Gemini beauty brand would be, but I went with Surat, and my first thought was because they're twins and sometimes they're opposing or they're just sort of uh, two sides of the same coin kind of a thing. I always appreciated how Surat has this uh, Japanese aesthetic. You know, all their makeup is made in Japan, but then like all the names of all the shades are French. And so I find that the Surat makeup is, it is, I feel like it is very, very airy. Like it, it just moves between all of these different styles. And I find Gemini's, at least the ones that I've met, they seem to have really impeccable and very unique style and taste. And uh, I find that to be the case with Surat, with Surat makeup. So anyway, that's what I went with. And I kept thinking to myself, I'm like, oh, I wish the row would come out with a beauty brand. I know they have some perfume, but they don't have like makeup and skincare. And I wish they would because they'd be perfect, right? So I'm digging in my bag here to see if I have any new makeup that is a bronzer. Oh, here's something, okay. Oh, this is from Gwen Stefani's brand. So this is new to me, this is not new at all. Uh, but I actually met with the PR firm that works with uh, this brand when I was in LA and so they sent this to me. So this is the Pick It Up Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo. All right, definitely put on some cream product here. Oh, look how cute that cover is. Okay, so the cream product is the deeper product on top and then this is the powder product. This looks very light. This is gonna be very subtle, although on top of this it may work. Okay. Let me shut up and just apply it. So um, I'm just gonna use my Sonia G Classic Base Brush. I'm just gonna use that to contour a little. It has a fragrance. Interesting. It just smells like perfume. Okay, the contour is deep for my skin tone, isn't it? Did I use too much? Maybe I just used too much. I'm gonna go in with my uh, foundation brush that I used on the concealer and maybe just tone that down a little bit. All right, now let's try the powder product. This I'm not too worried about because it does look very light in the pan. And ooh, it's very powdery. I'm using my Niji Pro brush from Sonia G. Oh, this is very fragrant. I was not prepared for that. And it's, um, it's a lot, it's a lot. I'm hoping it goes away. <laughs> Okay, well, I think the product looks nice. Definitely gave me a nice, pretty deep contour there. God, I don't like the fragrance though. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Gwen Stefani. Not my thing. Let's 
move to the next sign, Cancer. So Cancers are water signs. They are symbolized by the crab. <laughs> And I've actually known a lot of cancers in my life. I've worked with a lot of cancers and I find them to be lovely. They're definitely a little bit on the moodier side. They're a little bit more emotional than I am. So that always kind of takes a little bit of getting used to, but let me read what's in this book. So they're water signs, they're cardinal. Uh, the ruler is the moon. Sybil is the crab. Their mode is feeling and their motto is I feel. So uh, let's see. Cancer is the fourth sign of the zodiac representing deep feeling, protectiveness, and the home. I think that's where I really relate with my cancer friends. Yes, they all seem to be home bodies, which I can be deeply. Let's see, blah, blah, blah. Ruled by the moon, cancer is associated with highly personal emotions and also with the life of the subconscious. Dreams are integral to the world of cancer. If the ocean, whose tides are controlled by the moon, may be said to represent the universe of diffuse feeling, then the crab itself can symbolize the crystallization of those emotions in a single being. The armor of the crab hides its extremely sensitive interior world from view. Oh, interesting. So cancer colors, pale colors cream and white I would have never guessed that I guess because the crab is you know that crustacean color that like bluish grayish color cancer body areas breasts diaphragm stomach and skin did I read the Gemini body parts Gemini body parts hands arms shoulders nervous system upper respiratory system and Taurus, I know, is like the neck. Yeah, Taurus body areas, ears, vocal cords, neck and throat, uh, palate, salivary glands, and cerebellum. All right, so because cancers are sensitive, I thought I would pick a, a beauty brand that is really geared towards sensitive skin. So I went with Keir Weiss. I think that's a really good match. I think Keir Weiss is, um, well, she was a makeup artist and she developed uh, her whole brand around the idea that when she worked with models, you know, their skin would break out and this and that. And they were so tired of like all of these chemicals on their skin and they just wanted something cleaner and they didn't want, you know, just the damages of going through full faces of makeup several times a day. They just didn't want, you know, all the damage to their skin. And so, um, Kirsten, is it Kirsten or Kristen? Oh my goodness. Kirsten, I think, the founder of Cure Weiss, she created this whole line with really, really clean or, uh, organic products. And she's one of the very first beauty brands uh, that uses like certified organic um, products. So anyway, I thought that was a really good match. You let me know. You let me know what you think. Let's see, is there a blush I can use since I'm at that point? Oh, let me use one of these Pat McGrath palettes. Maybe I'll use this Starstruck Splendor palette and use one of these blushes. Are these new? Nymphette, I don't think that's new. That one on top. And then the one on the bottom, Coral Cosmos. I think that's new. I don't, that name does not ring a bell. So I think this shade is new. Let's try this one. It's not, it, it is really, really bright. That is like a light, light application of that blush. Wow. Let's move to the next sign, which is Leo. You guys can all guess what I'm associating with Leo, but let's let's see what the book has to say. So Leo, the element is fire, quality fixed, ruler the sun, symbol the lion, mode intuition, and motto is I create. And I think I, I told you that my moon is in Leo, so my emotions basically are you know, ruled by, represented by uh, the Leo. So let's see, um, ruled by the sun, Leo represents fully realized expression through powerful and directed action. Leo likes to lead and expects others to follow with due deference. However, sharing and warmth are important to this sign as well. Leo does not hesitate to give battle to the forces of injustice, oppression, and darkness whenever called upon to do so. Let's see, the body parts, heart, back and spine. Leos love to be admired, <laughs> not only for their physical appearance, but also for what they do. Being placed on a pedestal by others does not bother them in the least. I 
do not relate to that. Um, often natural leaders, they will revel in exemplifying the best traits of the group they represent, whether family, social, or political. Yet most Leos prefer accomplishing tasks without fanfare, wishing to convey a higher, confident, secure image. I think we all know Coco Chanel was a Leo, and so she has all of those uh, lions, uh, the lion motif on a lot of her uh, beauty products, I think even in uh, the fashion products, right? Sometimes I think the buttons have like lion's head. Anyway, so of course I had to pick Chanel as the beauty brand, I think that represents uh, Leo. So anyway, um, let me use this Pat McGrath highlighter, Golden Moonlight, and I'm just gonna throw a little bit of this on. I'm gonna use this detail brush from Sonia G incredibly shiny as we'd expect from Pat McGrath. Oh my God, you guys, I can still smell this bronzer contour. I can still smell it on my skin. I'm not, I'm not happy about that. Why did they make it so strong? <laughs> the next sign is Virgo. That's me. Let's see what the book has to say. All right, Virgo, earth sign. Mutable, ruler, ruler is Mercury, just like Gemini. So my rising sign and my sun sign are both ruled by Mercury. Symbol is the Virgin. Mode is sensation, thought, and my motto is I serve. So let's see, oh, uh, Virgo body parts. Ab abdomen, small and large intestines, pancreas, spleen, metabolic system. Let me tell you, when I'm stressed, it's, all about all of those things. Um, okay, so, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Virgo is a sixth sign of the zodiac, uh, both the second earth sign and the second sign to be ruled by Mercury. It differs from both Taurus and Gemini, however, in being much more analytical, careful, and orderly. I wish I was orderly, I really am not. Virgo represents the need of all life for a systematic approach to the concerns of existence. Maybe. This sign can be conceived symbolically as bringing diffuse energies down to earth and grounding them. Strong moral tendencies lend Virgo the Virgin a serious image and indeed only certain forms of humor appeal to it. Discriminating to a fault, Virgo is in fact highly selective concerning most forms of human experience. This is actually very me. Virgos tend to take things literally. So if promised something, we'll expect others to come through. Sometimes their sense of humor can be dampened by this literalism, although they are fond of wordplay and wit. Virgos often make silent demands, expecting that their needs will be met without having to state them verbally. I have learned, no one can read my mind, so I don't do that anymore. Um, traditionally, the sign of the Virgin is pictured as modest, even prudish, but many Virgos can drop a more conventional moral stance and express their feelings and desires without restraint. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Because I think uh, Virgos are supposed to be more demure, a little bit prudish. I would think that their makeup style would be on the lighter side. Um, I also think it would be of a, of a quiet sort of uh, feminine appearance. So I picked Westman Atelier for Virgos. I just thought that that represented all of the Virgo traits in terms of it being kind of like in the background and understated, um, yet also literal in that there really isn't much of like a huge learning curve, I think, when it comes to Westman Atelier products. They are what they are. They, you know, she's got foundation sticks, she has some highlighters, you know what I mean? Like there's basics, but they go a long way in the Westman Atelier line. So that was my thought. I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think? <laughs> what do you guys think? Well, I'm gonna do my brows and I do have um, brow pencils from Westman Atelier. I have Slate and Bark. Slate is kind of like a charcoal. Bark is more like a very cool toned brown. So I'm gonna go with Slate. Yeah, I'm gonna do slate, and it's one of those chisel tip eyebrow pencils. I am just dying to read your comments and what you think, what you would associate with these different zodiac signs. And please also let me know what your zodiac sign is, especially if you comment often. I would just love to know. <laughs> I just think it's fun. All right, let me brush this out. Let's talk about Libra, because I'm kind of on the cusp. My birthday is September 21st, and Libra starts on the 22nd. So I feel like sometimes I have some Libra qualities, but 
not really, not really. Sometimes I feel like I'm very far from Libra. So anyway, Libra, they're an air sign, they're cardinal. Their ruler is Venus, uh, symbol the scales, mode, thought, sensation, and motto is I weigh. So their body parts, kidneys, lumbar, spine, ovaries, descending colon. <laughs> So specific. Libra is the seventh sign of the zodiac, both the second air sign after Gemini, the second sign to be ruled by Venus after Taurus. Perhaps the most socially involved of all the signs, Libra symbolizes the need of the mature human being to take his or her place in the world. Moreover, Libra posits a full awareness of the roles which people play on the world's stage. Emphasizes the need for balance in life, weighing alternatives, aims at fair treatment for all, sometimes can be overly judgmental. Some of their uh, aspects are sensuousness, charm, grace, and good humor. Yeah, like I find Libras to be very, like socially, just very easy to be around. They like to see both sides of the problem. Uh, they're ca capable of procrastinating. Being attractive is extremely important to Libras. Another high priority for Libras is fairness, blah, blah, blah. So I associate it with Libra is Dior because I find that there is uh, quite the balance in their fashion, in their makeup, um, and they really run the gamut with everything between uh, beauty and perfume and fashion and accessories, the men's line, the women's line, they just, they kind of have it all and it all seems very well balanced. And I feel like that whole idea of needing to be, or not needing, but it's important to them to be attractive. I feel like I can see that in the Dior fashion, especially so many of the pieces are, um, you know, tailored perfectly. They're um, cropped just so, like maybe the men's not so much, but the, the women's fashions, they're all very, very pretty. All really, really pretty and all ladylike and very sort of tailored, but not stiff. So yeah, I just find that there's like this really beautiful kind of like balance in Dior's aesthetic. So I thought that would be a good Libra. I don't know, let me know. So we are on eye makeup. Okay, I'm gonna use this Addiction palette because I'm dying to use this shade up here. <laughs> this is, let me see, uh, Addiction Tokyo Holiday Addiction eyeshadow palette, quote unquote, unknown familiar. Oh no, the palette is 101. Sorry, Unknown Familiar, I think, is the name of the collection. Oh, here, yeah, at the bottom, duh, I'm so stupid. At the bottom, it says Look Closer 101, so that's the name of this palette. So I'm going to use this top shade here. I think I'm just going to use this all over my, all over my lids. I just want to get a sense of these shadows, and then I think what I'll do is like kind of a a full rundown of the products that they sent me, because it was a lot. It was the full collection, and they're Stunning. Oh, so pretty. Really pretty one and done shade. And this brown, it looks a little bit cooler in the pan, but it is very neutral on my lids. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay, well, so far so good with Addiction. I do have some of their products. Uh, when I went to Tokyo, I did buy like a little palette it was like, oh my goodness, it was like so precious to me. I was, I loved it. I loved it. Okay. Um, let's do some eyeliner. Oh, for eyeliner, I actually was sent um, some Gen C cruise liner. It's metallic eye pencils. Of course, I saw the word italic with eye pencil and I was like, let me try those. So that's the brand Gen C. I've never spoken about them on my channel before, but um, I know people love it. I know people love this brand, so I'm excited to try them out. Whoa, wow. Okay, so this is one shade. It's called Los Angeles. It's like orange, metallic, like a copper, like a copper. And then there's one called Miami. And this, <laughs> this is like a turquoise metallic shade. Ooh, look at that. I don't know if today's the day for that. Um, and then they sent Bangkok. Let's see what this looks like. Oh my gosh, this is pink. I don't know if I can do a pink eyeliner today. I think it's more for like artwork. I don't think you're gonna want pink 
in your eyes. Okay, let me try the LA, the copper one. I think that's the only one I could probably pull off today. Hmm, pretty. It goes on nicely, like easy, fun. All right. All right, so those are the Gen C cruise liners. Fun. Okay, next we have Scorpio. I think even if you're not into astrology, you know what a Scorpio is supposed to be like. <laughs> My best friend, Jen, who comes often, she is a Scorpio. I believe her moon is in Scorpio also. Yeah, but I think her rising is Leo. Anytime she does something crazy, she's like, this is why. <laughs> She always points out her birth chart. Okay, Scorpio, water sign. Quality fixed, ruler is Pluto. Symbol, the scorpion. Uh, mode, feeling and motto, I control. <laughs> so, uh, Scorpio body parts. Nose, genitals, blood, urethra, and bladder. Let's see, eighth sign of the zodiac, second water sign. Intense Scorpio is ruled by the dark planet Pluto. <laughs> Pluto, with Mars as its co-ruler, it shares certain aggressive characteristics with Aries, but is more fixed in its orientation. Scorpio symbolically demonstrates the power of middle age, the power of middle age, and a corresponding ability to direct and control the life around it. Scorpio has the capacity to shun human contact if it wishes and deal with serious matters in a purposeful fashion. Pluto grants volcanic sexual energies, as well as insight into the mysteries of metamorphosis and transformation. I kept thinking to myself, okay, what's a very sexy kind of brand? What is one that is uh, mysterious? What is one that is very transformative? And I came up with Tom Ford. I think Tom Ford makeup can, and, and beauty products, especially the perfumes actually, like when I think about Black Orchid, very mysterious, very bold, can be very bold, very powerful kind of makeup, especially the looks um, that I always see in the Tom Ford campaigns. So that's what I came up with. I couldn't come up with like a sexier, <laughs> dark, mysterious kind of brand. I feel like, yeah, I feel like Tom Ford and Scorpio, that makes sense, don't you think? So mascara, let me just curl my lashes here. And there is actually an Addiction Tokyo mascara I wanna try because in this collection they have um, color mascara. So they have purple, green, and copper. Of course I wanna try the copper, especially after I put on this LA uh, Los Angeles Gen C metallic liner. So here is the copper mascara. Let's give it a try. Definitely does a little, uh, little something. I think if you have blonde eyelashes, you'll see colored mascara so much better. I think it's so hard over my dark, coarse eyelashes, but I think you can see a little bit of it. So cool. I feel like, I feel like colored mascara is like back. Right, Hermes came out with some. I'm still coveting the Dior one that came out, I don't know, last year or the year before. Um, and now Addiction Tokyo. Not like it's earth shattering, but I don't feel like I've seen this many fun colors in a long while. What is next? We've got Sagittarius. Now I have a question mark around this because I had a hard time coming up with one. Actually, let's read the characteristics and I may change my mind. So Sagittarius, I know is a fire sign. Mutable, the ruler is Jupiter, which is the planet of good luck. Uh, symbol is the archer. Mode is intuition and motto is I philosophize. So, oh, their body parts. Hips, thighs, liver, veins, and the muscular system. Sagittarius, ninth sign of the zodiac. The third and last fire sign. Uh, ruled by expansive planet Jupiter. Sagittarius symbolizes the growing philosophical outlook of the human spirit, its expansiveness, optimism, and refusal to get bogged down in details. Sagittarius is depicted as an archer, a wise centaur who is half man and half horse. And in the same way, the philosopher in Sagittarius may let fly the shaft straight to the heart of the matter. Sagittarius will seek to ennoble the human condition and its arrows can also carry us to the stars. Sagittarius may err on the side of excess, going too far or too fast, but urges us not to succumb to pettiness or base actions. 
The Sagittarian love of movement and travel is legendary, but when they find their groove, Sagittarians can be remarkably content to stay in one place. Their electric energies are prodigious, but invariably flag when crucial self-motivation and self-confidence decline. I picked Charlotte Tilbury for Sagittarius because I had always heard that Sagittarians just love to party. <laughs> they just love to party and they just love to have a good time. And Charlotte Tilbury, to me, is a very like good time brand. Her marketing is, you know, it's all about Hollywood and glamour and going out and parties and yada, yada, yada. So that's who I picked for Sagittarius. I think that's a good match. I think it's a good match. I don't know how philosophical Charlotte Tilbury is or how philosophical that brand is, but um, they do like a good time, I feel like. So anyway, that is my pick for Sagittarius. Well, I feel like I keep sinking in my seat. My posture is so bad. I'm like ending up at the bottom of the frame here. Sorry. Um, I'm just gonna throw on the Farah Hamidi lip liner. I don't have, right? I don't have any new lip liners. You guys, I still smell this freaking Contour bronzer. I'm gonna have to wash my face after this. I'm kind of bummed. Um, I'm gonna throw on some of the Tom Ford Rose Lip Oil Tint. I feel like this should be called the Rose Oil Lip Tint. Wouldn't that make more sense than Rose Lip Oil Tint? Is it just me? Next we have Capricorn. Now Capricorn I know is the last earth sign and uh, they're hard workers. And one of my best friends is a Capricorn birthday is January 1st <laughs> and let's see they are uh, earth cardinal their ruler is Saturn uh, symbol is the goat mode is sensation motto is I master and their body areas teeth skeletal system and knees I had no idea okay the, the 10th sign of the zodiac but the first of what could be called the more universal signs, I don't know what that means, with Aquarius and Pisces. Third and last earth sign, uh, ruled by the fateful planet Saturn. Capricorn symbolizes the serious outlook of maturity, uh, but also an awareness of how the individual spirit relates to the universe. Economy, a refusal to waste energy, and a careful approach to things all typify Capricorn's responsible attitudes. So they have ambition, drive, and a striving to succeed. Fortunately, the ability to get to the top and stay there are characteristic of Capricorn. The fateful nature of life is sensed in this sign, but the importance of free will and, of, and assertiveness not forgotten. Capricorns have an instinctive knowledge of power and how it works. Many must beware of a tendency toward dictatorial <laughs> behavior. <laughs> okay, I can't say that about my friend. I don't think she doesn't have that. But I picked Victoria Beckham, beauty. Talk about what, motivation, aspiration, just someone who just has continuously climbed and climbed and climbed between starting, you know, basically as one of the Spice Girls and then marrying David Beckham and, uh, growing a family and then creating her fashion line and now her beauty line. She seems unstoppable. So yeah, she just reminded me of, of the goat, just constantly just climbing that hill. So Victoria Beckham, that's who I have for Capricorn. You know, there is a lip product that I've been meaning to try. I'm so embarrassed it's taken me this long. Let me find it. So Allie Glines, you guys know her here on YouTube, she came out with a beauty line called Ravi Beauty. And she started with three, uh, three shades of one lip product called Effortless Lips. And I know there's like a nude color in here, which is what I wanna, <laughs> surprise, surprise, which is what I wanna put on today. Uh, I'm not sure what the shade name is though. So there's Dahlia Tulip, which I think, yeah, I think that's like a red shade. And then I think it's Lily. Okay, so here is the packaging, and oh, here is the shade Lily. So I'm gonna put this on. I'm gonna put it on just right over this rose lip oil tint. This has like a cocoa, cocoa flavor, not flavor, scent. Moisturizing, oh pretty. You know, and not like, highly, highly pigmented, which I like. There's like a medium level of pigmentation, which is so pretty. Oh, and of course it works beautifully with the um, Farah Hamidi uh, lip pencil. Anyway, that's great. 
Okay, we've got two more signs left. We've got Aquarius, and I know exactly, this was actually probably the first matchup that I made because, uh, well, I'll tell you in just a second. So Aquarius, they are an air sign, and I know that's uh, a misconception that they're a water sign because of Aquarius, but they're an air sign, they're fixed. The ruler is Uranus, the symbol is the water bearer. Mode is thought and motto is I universalize. <laughs> Uh, so the 11th sign of the zodiac, and let's see, third and last air sign, ruled by the explosive planet Uranus. Uh, Aquarius symbolizes advanced thought, which takes us out of our physical state and allows us to view the infinite in all things. Aquarius also represents acceptance of all points of view and shows the universal wisdom inherent in thoughts and actions. So Aquarians are promoters of high ideals, valuing scientific and universal truths highly. They strive to maintain objectivity and for this reason are sometimes accused of coolness or lack of emotion. Because they can skate with ease across the surface of life, sizing up situations and reacting speedily, some find Aquarians too superficial in their approach. Paradoxically, Aquarians are often irresistibly attracted to those profound, darker aspects of others that seem to figure less prominently in their own personality. One thing I know that is like a, one of the first personality traits, if you look up, you know, personality traits of Aquarians or whatever, is humanitarian and like altruism. Those are the two things that I feel like I always read about in terms of Aquarians, and it's something that I've noticed in the Aquarians that I know. So, of course, I had to pick Shantakai because they are um, always working with not-for-profits in the um, animal welfare space, and so I thought that would be kind of like the perfect match. And I find their products to be very innovative. Um, you know, they're this brand that I think has a little bit of a reputation of being like a little bit, I don't know, stodgy, but they're one of the first um, luxury beauty brands that came out with like a CBD cream, which I love for face and body. I love it. It's so calming and soothing. And every time they come out with uh, like a limited edition, like holiday collection or something like that, they always like kind of blow me away with like the colors they choose or even the packaging or they're a little bit more daring, I think, than they're usually given credit for. So I feel like that's very akin to Aquarians. So that was my pick for Aquarius. And then lastly, Pisces. Pisces is the last sign of the Zodiac. And so they represent basically, I don't know, the end of your life or transition. I do also know that uh, they rule the feet. Oh, I didn't, what's the Aquarius body parts? Aquarius body parts, lower legs and ankles, circulatory system. Pisces, you know, the reason why I know <laughs> The Pisces body areas, feet, toes, lymphatic system. So I have a friend that dated two Pisces in a row and they both had foot fetishes. <laughs> okay, so their element, water. Their quality is mutable. Their ruler is Neptune, symbol, the fish. Mode, feeling, and motto, I believe. So they're the 12th and last sign of the zodiac, can be viewed as the most highly evolved of all the signs. It is not only the ultimate water sign following Cancer and Scorpio, but it is also ruled by the watery planet Neptune. So they're like uber water signs. Pisces symbolizes the merging of the human soul with the cosmos, a necessary step before the next incarnation may begin anew in Aries. Pisces symbolizes a deep belief in the highest powers of the universe. Pisces teaches us not to be afraid to let go of our earthly form and teaches that death is only the beginning of new life. Um, they have excellent memories. <laughs> They're impressionable. Uh, they tend to be devotional, true believers, highly empathic and sensitive. Extreme sensitivity can make it difficult for Pisces to lead an easy social life. Though often characterized as the sign of sorrows, suffering is born well by Pisces. However, they can be vulnerable to depression and occasionally beset by self-pity. Escapes involving addiction are particularly dangerous for them. The deep and complex emotional life of those born under this sign makes them highly attractive to those who long for contact with the profound in life. Wow, well, my pick for Pisces doesn't go much deeper than the fact that they're the ultimate water sign. And I picked La Mer. 
So I thought of, okay, Pisces, right? The ultimate water sign, fish, Neptune, water sign, the whole deal. Um, and La Mer, their miracle broth, um, I think the majority of it is comprised of like sea algae and I mean, it's called La Mer for Christ's sake. So anyway, um, I thought that was a good fit, but um, also La Mer doesn't actually have that much. I mean, the focus is on skincare. Um, so they really don't have that much makeup, as we know. They have foundation and powder, whatever. They have like a face mist, which is more skincare anyway. And then their skincare line is even pretty pared down. And so when I thought about Pisces also being like the end of the zodiac and, you know, this like transcendence and you've it's the most evolved, you learned all your lessons, this is when you would like have pared down <laughs> your entire beauty regimen and you would only need just a few things a toner and a moisturizer and for beauty you would just need like a little bit of foundation a little bit of powder the la mer lip balm like that's all you would need so i thought that was a good pairing <laughs> between zodiac sign and beauty brand i'm gonna stop talking because i've been talking for i think hours now at this point uh, i'm gonna have to definitely edit this video down but that is it for today's mishmas video slash vlog um i know it was a little crazy at the end there i was just just wanted to try on all this different makeup but i also want to talk about zodiac signs so there you have it only during Mishmas. All right, guys. Uh, so good having you here. I'll see you in tomorrow's Mishmas video. Bye.